let's actually start on the economy and what markets are doing. And then maybe you'll give us some news on what you're acquiring. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, if you want to, we're here. When you look at uh, overall the markets, there's been a mismatch with what we're seeing in the real economy and what markets expectations for Fed cuts are. Mm -hmm. Like, where are you on this? Well, look, my, my view is it's a bit of a pinch me moment that we've been going through, that the resilience of not just the economies, but also financial markets um, to the geopolitical crises that are going on, to the rise in interest rates and the fight against inflation has been remarkably strong. Um, whether that continues, um, I think we're all hopeful. Uh, and the overall sentiment for 2024 is, is positive. Uh, and there are lots of good supporting factors for that positive sentiment. Uh, but I think the, the distance traveled so far has been, has been surprising to the upside. Yeah, what do you worry about in 2024 if we've had a positive year, and actually almost unexpectedly so, 12 months ago we were thinking that a lot of companies would default. What are you seeing in your book? Well, you went to the right place. So it, take away the, the unknowns about geopolitics and all of the elections that are headed ahead. But um, the, the rise in rates, there's been a concern that the refinancing wave that would take place, particularly for the most sensitive areas in this regard, um, and commercial real estate top among those, would be tough. Um, my own view is that whenever you see we're climbing a mountain of, of refinancings, it tends to get absorbed in the capital markets. I think the rate action since sort of late last year is helpful in that regard and the overall market sentiment. Uh, and, but we would expect a, a significant increase in issuance this year as, as issuers address the the refinancing waves that they have ahead. What if it were to go wrong? Again, why are we so optimistic about the year? Well, as I say, you know, we, we work through it piece by piece and whether different parts of the segments of the market absorb different elements of, of what needs to be financed, whether that's bank loans, today the private credit market and obviously the public markets. Um, I think there is the, the, the underlying resilience, strength, appetite to digest what, what still lies ahead. How um, are you worried about the, the German economy again in technical recession? I don't know whether this is a year where you kind of, you know, the German economy muddles through and, and gets better. Well, as you saw, it was, it was very light negative growth last year, um, which is, of course, disappointing. But it reflects the fact that Germany is going through some relatively significant structural changes um, as it adapts to the world as it is, as it works through you know, the, the vestiges of the energy crisis. Um, we think, of course, you know, and Germany is resilient. Germany has a, 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 a wide range of strengths that will come to the fore over time, but it'll take a little time. I think 2024 will be one of, again, relatively stagnant growth um, as Germany works through some of those structural uh, elements. I think there are, there is a poli policy mix. There are some of these strengths that should come to the fore this year. So we're very optimistic about the second half of 24 and into 25 no. uh, as we get through some of those challenges. So what does that mean for Deutsche Bank specifically? I know you, you're also coming out with your results in two weeks, so you can't talk t too much in, in what we've seen so far. But what about 12 months from now? Well, obviously, we, we care a lot about the success of our home market. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the largest part of our business. But, but because we're international, globally set up, because our business is serving, in particular, our clients' needs as a global house bank globally, and, and we're exposed, if you like, to all of the trends that are, that, are, that are going on, many of which have been quite favorable for our business. Um, so we think there has been a, uh, a rate-driven benefit to the banking industry in, in 2023. We don't think that's over. Um, so that as, as the short-term rate impact, as the, the, the pass-through benefits that probably meant in 23 the banks over-earned sort of go into, the, into history, um, the impact of long-term rates and, and where banks have, are coming from in terms of negative or very low rates for a long time will be felt over time. We look forward to participating in that and also a recovery in some of the episodic activity out there. So financial market improvement uh, and also M&A and, and, and financing markets coming back, as I mentioned. Are, are you optimistic about bonuses? Look, it'll reflect performance in, in 23. And as you've seen in a number of different areas of, of the investment banking business in particular in 23, it had been a difficult market. I think we and our competitors want to pay for performance and, and, and work hard in our, in our managing our, our incentive compensation structures to do that. And, and that's something we, we aim to, to be consistent on. But if you look at you know, the business, what's your, your biggest challenge actually in, in helping to run it? Is it talent retention? Is it hiring rights? Like what are some of the, the concerns that well, are We went through a wave of, of the, this war for talent that was in particularly present in 22 going into 23. That sort of changed in the last, say, nine months. 
um, which as an employer you, look, you see as positive. You know, a, a slowdown in that turnover uh, and in the, in, the, in the very extreme competition for talent is, is frankly good. Um, but it was also a year, oddly 23, where a number of, of competitors like us could reposition our businesses yeah. uh, and take advantage of a talent market that was, was unusually yeah. sort of in motion, uh, I would call it, in, in 23. And that's something that we did through investments, among other things. And so could that, could that continue? The, the in, I like the in motion. <laughs> I think it would slow down for us. I, I think we've, we've, we've built the platform to a place where we're very comfortable um, with how we're positioned. Uh, and it's, I think it's important to make sure that the people who joined the platform last year um, get sort of, you know, uh, str well connected yeah. to the Deutsche Bank franchise, to our clients globally, uh, and then go from there. So um, there's a lot of talk about who you're buying, whether it's a big company and M&A and whether it's cross-border. Well, look, we don't comment generally as, as always on, on M&A transactions, but, um, but what I, I would say is we, for a long time we've been proponents of, of consolidation in the industry, um, but we've also said that conditions, preconditions have to be in place to allow that to happen. As some of the coverage since the article on Friday uh, has pointed out, the preconditions in Europe are, are quite difficult um, across a, a number of different dimensions. Um, so, you know, we'll continue what, to watch the space. It, meaning what valuation is hard or it's just the visibility of, of what we're going through economically? Well, what I'd start with is a lack of a single banking market in Europe um, and, and the ability really to, to reap the synergies of a, of a banking merger across borders. Um, at the moment, um, because of essentially the rate movement having created what we refer to as a fair value gap on the bank's balance sheet, there's some strong financial arguments against it, making it difficult to afford from a capital perspective. I think the other thing is, and this is very much sort of where we've been for the past several years, you know, getting the, the business as it is really, you know, fit for competition, fit for the future, uh, is a lot of effort. We've, we've had a, a, a very full agenda, I have to say, over the past several years and continue to have a full agenda at DB. The market seemed priced to perfection. Is that a worry for what does it mean for volatility and how your, your traders? Look, I'd say it depends on the market. I mean, I think credit markets and credit spreads have been unusually strong. We would have expected, given, again, the, the, the recession risks that have been present, the impact on corporate issuers of, of the rate environment. We might have expected a, a, a more difficult credit spread environment. Uh, I think equity markets have been quite constructive, but as we all know, relatively concentrated, at least in the S&P. Um, so I wouldn't say price to perfection. I think there's still, there's still sort of opportunity for momentum. Yeah. Um, and of course, the rate market has been, has been um, I think, again, relatively uh, benign, given, given the potentially persistent inflation that we that we continue to face in, in the sort of G20. So if you look around the world, where are you most optimistic in, in terms of regions? Is it the U.S.? Well, look, the U.S. has has this remarkable strength in, in terms of the innovation, the size of its economy, its, its domestic consumer market. Those are wonderful things. And I think long term, you know, huge prospects, no question. AI, of course, for us and some of the things we're following, the impact of AI is likely to be quite significant. And of course, there the United States is, is a leader. Uh, I would call out India as a, as a, a market that, that has a, an extremely strong growth path ahead of it. Um, and one that, that sort of I have to say, and we as an institution, very excited about. Yeah. What so does AI look areas. like, James, for you? Is it displacement or is it just freeing bankers to do you know, things that add more value? I think both. Um, but let me start with, as a CFO, of course, you know, cost-driven AI sort of uh, uh, you know, use cases very close to my heart. And we're finding those, uh, I have to say. And it's been, I think that has a, still a long way to run, the, the idea that we'll will generate enormous efficiencies. But I think next to that, one of the most important things is just sort of the client experience mm -hmm. that we can drive through AI. We're seeing it in, in, in many of the use cases that we've put to work, yep. um, and we think that'll continue. And I think the third thing is innovation, in, in particularly in product capabilities.